Hi, this is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Baruch Hashem. Every time that I'm trying to think to myself, what should I, uh, what should I do with my life? So Baruch Hashem, the Creator is uh, always, always is very. You say con consistent with me with the same message. Yesterday, I uh, I gave a um, I gave a certain speech, and someone had a certain question to me that 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 sh shook my my stability. I was I was thinking, I was doubting myself in a way, and then I. I went and, and I, I, I immediately turned all of my, my thoughts to tshuva and to ask Hashem, maybe something that I said was wrong, maybe something was, maybe I was not thinking right, maybe I had some mistake, I'm, I'm, I, that's me, I'm always checking. And then I said to Hashem, in the, Hashem was in, in my feeling, in my thoughts, and I'll explain to you a little bit how you do that. In my thoughts, I felt that Hashem Barach was supporting me and justifying me and telling me you're okay and keep on and that's what I taught you and that's what I, I shown you and it's okay, just continue, move on, don't look back. And then I was questioning on myself even harder, I said, but maybe I'm totally wrong, maybe, I like, maybe I'm all wrong. And then that thought came to me again, okay, so let's check, you know, okay, check, let's, okay, check it, maybe, maybe you're wrong, maybe you're not, check. And I start checking. And how can you check? How can you check? You can go and ask other people, so you don't have a clear answer. If they say yes, yeah, so you don't know if they're right. You, they're going to say no, you don't know if they're right. You don't, so from other people, for sure you can tell. But inside of us we have that meter, we have that, that scale that you feel when you are honest with yourself. I'm not saying that you reach that truth, the divine truth. I'm just saying about yourself, you know you have that ability, that sensor to feel, to sense if to yourself you're lying or that you're honest with yourself. This is a tool that everyone has, except of those ones that are on medication and, and you know, hallucinating in the streets and, and with a, with a, with a JC syndrome, the Jerusalem syndrome. Okay, with that, okay, it's too much for us. We don't know how to deal, but as long as people are, are keeping their sanity and they're not becoming all of, all, all of a sudden like a different person, an outsider, some imaginary friend is walking with them all of the time, if they're still on the path, so you still have that tool, that sensor inside of you to, 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 to connect yourself to, to, to the inner voice that is showing to you what your truth is, and it's not what your truth is, it doesn't say, no, it's your truth, it, it's just showing you if you're lying or not. If to yourself, if you're lying to yourself or you're being honest with yourself. This is the sensor. That's what that Hashem gave us to check ourselves. And that's the only tool that we really have. If you want to know if you're right, if you're wrong, if you're making it, if you're not, if you, you, may, if you achieve something, if not, you can only check with yourself if you were honest while taking those decisions or not. Let's say a couple, they got married and now they divorce. Okay, or they're about to, they're talking, negotiating, separating. Okay, something very frightening, very big issue. You don't know what to choose if to separate, not to separate. You have the benefit, the good for the children and also your, your, your side and her side and the future and maybe it's better to break it and maybe to do, we're still young, so maybe to start an, 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 another family, a new opportunity. Maybe, Many big calculations, many big things are involved in this, in this um, situation and you need to figure out the truth. 
how you're going to know to separate. It's very heavy to say yes, very heavy to say no. Fights, arguments, cursing, rebukes, wars in the house. Many reasons to separate, many reasons not to separate. But still, we had our moments, we had our times, the children. Maybe we can work it out. Maybe it's worthy to put more time to invest, to go, to counsel, to, 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 to experts, to speak. Many options. How, we, how are you going to know what the, the answer is? You cannot. There is only one thing that you can do. Ask yourself, what are my motives? What are my reasons to take that direction that I'm taking? Is it because that I am looking for good for myself and also for her, for the children and also for the future? Am I taking responsibility and I'm able to admit that I was wrong? And this is why I'm taking those steps or that maybe I'm running away from it. And I'm just justifying myself and making up stories of why it's better and why it will be greater and it's also good for her and for sure it's better for the children. Maybe I'm just making up. On that point you should stop. That's where you should put your finger and to make your inner investigation on finding your own truth. Now, there is a concept, there is a saying in, in Hebrew we're saying, and also been translated to all the languages, we're calling the righteous men of the generation, the real righteous men of the generation. Okay, why are we saying that he's so real? What is so real about him? He's the greatest, okay, great, the greatest, wonderful, the wisest, or oh, the holiest, I can understand. Many words I can understand about him. Not all, but some. But now, when you see that they're calling him a tzaddik ha'amiti shebador, that he is the right one of the generation, so what does it mean? If you said on that righteous man that he is ha'amiti shebador, that he is the one of truth, so you put all the rest in darkness, in the light. They're not real. They're all fake. He is the Amiti. He is the real one. And all the rest are fake. You cannot say that. You cannot interpret that concept of Atzadika Amiti Shebador, the righteous man, the real righteous man of the generation, to say on him that he is real. Because by saying that he is real, you put all the rest of the righteous people, the real righteous people, they are righteous. We're talking about the righteous ones. Not talking about rabbis, not talking about people that are chasing after honor, after money, people that call themselves righteous. No, we're talking about real righteous people. Between those 36 hidden righteous people, okay? Between those 100 righteous people that you have in the generation, how can you say that one of them is real? It's, it's, it's impossible. You cannot say on him that he is real and they're not real. So now we're going to go deeper to the meaning of the word ha'amiti. What is the amiti, the real? Is also truthful. That he is the most, the closest one to the truth of them all. Not that he is real and they're fake and they're liars. No, not at all. Everyone are real. But everyone are real, and he is a little bit deeper, closer to the truth than them. In what? He is truthful about himself. He is the most honest one, the most truthful one of them all. With himself in front of the mirror. This is how he reached that level to become the tzaddik amiti of the generation. That he was so honest with himself. When he was checking himself, when he was doing tshuva, when he was clarifying between good and bad, when he was trying to find the answer to the deepest questions, to go with the truth, he was the most honest to admit in his mistakes, to deal with his lackings, with his weaknesses, to admit to be a person of truth, it's not to run to the mountains and to deliver wisdom from the upper world, from the divine world. It's to be an honest and truthful person because we received that sense or that tool from the Creator 
that we know to define inside of ourselves if we are truthful or if we're lying to ourselves. That's the tool of truth. That is what that you need to do with yourself. You need to go and to make a conversation between you to your true self and to expose the truth, to reveal it, to uncover it, to say the truth, to be honest, to say, I messed up. I'm too scared to deal with this relationship. I'm too afraid to talk from the heart. I don't want to share my inner thoughts, my anxieties, my fears. I don't want to deal with it. A friend of mine asked me a question and he asked me what I'm going to do. I have issues of anger. I'm so angry and I never thought that I'm such an angry person. I told him, you're not angry at all. Anger is not your problem. Fear is your problem. And because that there is a person in your life that is threatening you, that you're going to have to deal with your fears and you don't want that, so you choose to be angry at him. That he won't force you to deal with your fears, with your anxieties of realizing the real truth. After the, the class, will will answer. Fear leads to anger, leads to fear, fear leads to hate, hate leads to suffering. Yes, exactly. So when a person is standing in that place that he wants to find the truth, the only thing that he needs to do is to choose to be as honest and truthful as he can to deal with his own fears. Your lackings are not because you don't have money or you don't have a job, that you're not yet married or that you have not bought that house yet. Those are not your problems. Your problem is that you're afraid to deal with the, 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 the emotional stress that feeling that you have inside of yourself when you've been pushed to confront that situation. Not the fact that you don't have the money in your pocket. That's not your problem. The fact that you will have to give some answers to explain that you don't have and to explain why you don't have and to reach that inner truth of yours of why you don't have you. Why you don't have. Why you as who that you are, why you don't have, why really you think that you don't have, because you're so scared to deal with that, so you're going to be angry, and you're going to have bad habits, and you're going to have your hobbies, and you're going to be occupied all day long, and you're working, and it's not allowed to disturb me, and I must make money, and what do you want, and a person must learn, and I must go to shul, and you cannot tell me this, and you cannot, and that's you, you're closing yourself and dividing yourself from the huge favor that the Creator wants to do with you, and it's to rebuke you on all your sins. It's to help you to deal with all your weaknesses. That that is the greatest gift of them all, and we are just terrified from receiving it. No, 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 no. Humility, chas shalom. Just not to be humbled. Not again. Not that curse. Not <laughs> Just not that, please. But... You cannot receive the wisdom unless you're humble. Humility is the tool and it's the vessel to contain the wisdom and the bounty. Because the Torah and the soul and the godliness itself, your soul itself, is in the aspect of water. And water are coming down and they're receiving the shape of the vessel. And the vessel must be deep and must accept and must receive so you must receive the wisdom. And if the wisdom is coming to you in the way of rebuke, you must remind yourself, Et asher yohav Hashem yochiach, the Creator, He rebukes the ones that He loves. Because that He loves us, so He is bringing our sin in front of our eyes, that we will deal with them. And by dealing with them, we're removing them. We're cleaning them, we're removing, throwing them away from our table, from our zone, from our place. And then when you're humble, suddenly the letters are coming to you and you can understand the combinations and the wisdom and the numeral value of letters and of sentences and of verses. And suddenly everything comes down and become clear and you can see things with bright wisdom, with, your, with, with the wisdom, with the eyes of your, of your brain 
domain of your knowledge of your of of of, of the ancient archives of of heaven you're connected to that spiritual zone that belongs to the world that is above us and the wisdom is coming down to you and as much as you're going to humble yourself more and more that's how you're going to ex how much you're going to expand your vessels to contain more and more and you can reach a certain place of humility that you won't be part of the space anymore you won't have a place anymore you're going to be above the place you're going to be so humble so nothing that you will be in that aspect of ma of what am i you won't have no grab in physicality at all and then the wisdom that will be your share will be an endless wisdom from the infinite world from eternity and suddenly you're going to find yourself understanding things without learning them and finalizing things without thinking about them and knowing things that are written behind the walls and you're going to understand things about souls of people, things that you never learned. And you're going to try and you're going to find yourself that your wisdom is standing for you. It's, it's truth. It's, 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 it's stable in your life. Suddenly, advice that you're going to find in, to your own life, you're going to find that it works. And not only for you, for many other people. And you're going to find advice that you were yearning and, and searching for years to find those advice and you went to wise people, to rabbis, to, to, and, and you were consulting and you were learning and investigating and you couldn't find anything. But when you stop and you meditate, you close your eyes and you connect yourself to your soul and you ask Hashem for guidings, please Hashem help me. We're choosing so fast just to be religious just to be religious. No, I'm putting tefillin, I'm keeping Shabbat, I'm eating kosher, I'm doing everything fine. Great. No, I'm covering myself, I'm covering my head. No, I'm keeping Shabbat. No, I'm doing everything fine. But so why are you terrified? So why are you running for your life? Why are you scared from commitment? So why are you not able to develop an honest relationship? Why you cannot be rebuked on your lackings? Why it's so hard for you to answer? Why can't you smile and say, really, thank you from the bottom of my heart? Why are you always afraid and scared what other people are going to say about you? And those are all results of your sins. So you're a sinner. You're keeping Shabbat and you're sinning. You're eating kosher and you're sinning. Still, meanwhile, while you're keeping Shabbat and keeping all Torah mitzvot and lulav and sukkah and purim and you're drinking wine and you're doing everything and perfect and you drank your cup before of Chatzot Hayom half of the day and everything is perfect. Uh, why, why aren't you happy? So, if really you're walking in that straight path, why aren't you happy? Why aren't you happy? If you're not happy, it means that something is still wrong. Something is still on your tail. Something is still chasing you. That's why you're scared. That's why you're afraid. That's why you're worried. That's why you don't know. That's why you have so many thoughts. But when a person is completing his tshuva, means that he is completing his way back to Hashem. After being drifted, after being exiled, after failing so many times, you started your tshuva process, your process of coming back toward Hashem. When you complete that distance and you are now standing in front of the Almighty, in front of the King of all kings, in your mind, because the Creator is above this world. He's not only in Jerusalem, only in Mount Sinai, in Mount Zion. He's not only in the Western world. No, He's He's here. He is now. He is with you. When you're falling, when you're failing, in every place He's with you, unless, except of when you're lying. Only when you're lying to yourself, so Hashem is not there. But as long as you are honest, even if you're in the most contaminated places, Hashem is with you, and you can see Him. You can see His individual supervision on your life. You can see how He's dressing Himself to you in videos, in films, in music, in conversations, in people, in books, in, 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 in street signs, in whatever, in police officers, in restaurants, in, in... Oh, Hashem, I was just hungry and suddenly a kosher place. Oh, I was just thinking about Him and here He is and I was just wondering and she called and all of those things and you can be in the most filthiest places of them all and Hashem will call you 
And Hashem will scream to you, Hey, I'm here, I'm with you, I'm not leaving you alone for a moment. So you can see Hashem. It not depends in your holiness and in your purity how much that Hashem will be with you. No, only in how truthful and honest you are. So what is separating us from the Creator and how can we come closer to Him and to cancel and to remove all of those husks, all of those things that are separating us from Him? The sins are the things that are separating us from Him, and tshuva is the thing that is bringing us closer to Him. Tshuva, when you come closer to Hashem, and you drop off, you, you give up on all your bad habits, on your sins, on your crimes, on your bad attributes, on your bad manners, bad behaviors, on all of your sins, when you throw them away, so then you can see Hashem. But when you're still holding your nonsense and you're holding your bad habits, so they're blocking the light from between you and Hashem. And you cannot see. And suddenly your sins are blocking your light. And you're afraid because of your sins. And you're terrified. And you're angry. And you're upset. And you're falling to sadness and to depression. And you need this and you need that. And you don't know. All of those are faces and shapes of our sins. So now, if you caught something, let's say that suddenly you're afraid from your landlord. You're afraid that he's going to kick you out of the house. Something, okay, so now hold that and do tshuva on that. Come back to Hashem from this situation. You have something that is destroying your life, that is draining your happiness, that is droughting your life, that is... Ruin your happiness? Okay, catch it and now deal with it. Don't be so scared. Deal with it. Take it to your lab, your private lab, put it on the table and dissect it. Okay, I'm afraid from him. Who is he for me? He's a threat. Okay, why is he a threat? He's got the power to throw me and my children out of the house. Okay, and then what's going to happen? Hashem cannot help me. Let's say that He will. What is the problem? between? Go make an investigation. Uh, try to understand. I don't have enough money to pay Him. Okay, why I don't have enough money to pay Him? And go deeper and deeper in your investigation until you will find the deepest layer of your own truth. Be truthful. Don't react. Don't act as a result of your fear. No, I'm not going to answer. I will answer. I'm going to take a loan. I'm going to call my father. I'm going to call my mother. Oh no, she died. Oh no, she's alive. I, no, relax. <laughs> Deal with your truth. Deal with yourself. Why me as a person don't have a, a, the money to pay him? Why me as a person afraid from another man? Why me as a person don't have the courage to pick up the phone and to tell him, I need another three days. I'm sorry, I'll speak to you in three days. Hang up the phone. Why I can't do it? Me as a person. Why? Me, myself. I don't believe in myself. Okay, why? I don't believe that Hashem loves me, that Hashem accepts my prayers. Okay, why? And keep on investigating. Hashem don't love me. Okay, why? Why do you think Hashem don't love me? And then you will go deeper and deeper with that investigation. And don't stop when it hurts. Don't stop when you're afraid. Oh, Hashem don't love me. That's it. No. What, what? Who told you that Hashem don't love you? The fact that you, that thought came into your mind? That's not the answer. It doesn't mean that it's the truth. If you thought it, you thought. Maybe it's a foreign thought. Maybe it's a sad and negative thought. Maybe it's not the truth. Okay. Does really Hashem don't love me? So how can it be that if Hashem doesn't love me that I know about His existence? It's written that if Hashem loves you, He's showing His face to you. And I saw Hashem's face many times. I saw Hashem here and there. I saw some situations. I saw some combinations. I saw some amazing miracles. In I remember when I... Okay, so I have my evidence that Hashem, He loves me. Hashem shown to me. Hashem was answering my prayers when I was a child. Okay, so maybe when I was a child, he was answering my prayers. Maybe today he stopped. So, okay, why did he stop? Did he really stop? Yesterday, I had a miracle in my life. 
I was walking, crossing the street, that truck came and it stopped right in front of my eyes. Okay, so it was a miracle. So Hashem is protecting me. He is saving my life. So if He's saving my life, so how can I say that He doesn't love me? No, so He does. Okay, so let's find the real reason. It's not because He doesn't love me, because here I am, talking to Him, talking to myself, investigating the truth. It's the strongest, clearest, strongest, most powerful evidence that Hashem loves me. If He gives me the power to investigate and to learn about Him and to know about Him, so for sure He loves me. So, okay, from now and on, I'm not thinking negative thoughts that He doesn't love me. Something else is blocking. Okay, what is it? Maybe it's my sins. It's very easy to blame. Blame Hashem, blame yourself, blame your rabbi, blame your friend. It's very easy. I did it my way. Everyone is doing it in their way. You should find the real truth that is the truth that you sense inside of yourself that you are being truthful while thinking that kind of truth. And then you will find that truth that will set you free. Because you will come back to Hashem and you're going to say, you know what Hashem, even if you don't know the answer, even if you couldn't find the reason, but still you say, okay Hashem, I came to that truth that you love me and I want to love you. I love you in a way and I want to love you more and something is blocking the money. I don't know why, but you know what? If that's how you supervise on me, I'm accepting it, I respect it, but because that I know that I still need it, I'm going to keep on asking if it's okay, and I'm going to ask, and now you're a free person. You're not afraid anymore. You will find yourself stronger answering that phone call and saying, look, I'm doing the best that I can. I need another three days. Let me be in touch with you in three days. I'm sorry. And that's it. You will find that power. Why? Because you're not running away from your fears, so you're not losing your power. So you're not being confused and lost and separated from your inner source. When you're truthful, when you're honest with yourself, suddenly an inner spring of pure energy is reviving you, is making you alive is inspiring you and stabilizing you and clarifying and cleansing you and bringing you to your true self and you're able to admit in the worst things that you've done in your life and you are sure and confident that your words will be accepted with honor and with respect from the other side and you will admit to your partner in life, to your children, that you were wrong, that you were cheating, that you were lying, that you were hiding, but you will do it from the heart, not to try to escape from responsibility, just you will be truthful about it, and you will apologize, and you will be forgiven. And like that those people will forgive you because of your honesty, like that they will forgive you, they are a mirror to show you that the divine forgiveness will take place in your life as well. When you will do tshuva and come back to the Creator from all of your lack of faith, from all of your confusions, and you will come back to Him by telling Him, I want to come back to you. I want to believe in you. I want to see you. When you will do that, you will feel the presence of Hashem back in your life. And then the night will illuminate like the us. day. The night will illuminate and shine like the day. Suddenly you're going to find answers to your deepest questions, to questions that you were terrified and couldn't dare even to ask. Suddenly light and positivity will, will, will fill your life will illuminate your life and you will find yourself much happier and stronger and more stable. And things will also going to start taking place in the physical aspect of your life. You will find more comfort, more quiet. Your mind will be more settled. You will think deeper and with clearer mindset on which kind of job I need to take, 
who are the people that I can trust and who are the people I should never speak and discuss with them about my issues and my fears and you will be an honest truthful person with honest and amazing results in your life because that you came back to Hashem from your own darkness from being occupied and busy and trapped in your sins in your mistakes in your fears and you just deal with them with the eyes and heart of truth and then they all melted they will all disappear from your life and then in that moment you will not gonna see no more lackings about yourself anymore you will stop hating yourself and punishing yourself and, and, and blaming yourself and slaughtering yourself on your mistakes because if you're gonna make an honest investigation of, on, about the reason, the root of your sins, of your crimes, those ones that today you're blaming yourself on them, I messed up, I ruined, I destroyed it, I was the one, I did it, and on and on. If you're going to make that same honest investigation with yourself, why was I sinning in the first place? Why I chose to lie? Why I chose to hide? Why I chose to expose myself in places that I was not supposed to? Why I was doing this? Why I made that mistake? Why? The truth! You will find yourself standing in front of your mirror and in that mirror suddenly gonna appear an innocent, pure and holy child that doesn't have a clue how to deal with his life because he was not educated right at all. He never been taught on how to be righteous and strong and pure. He never been taught how to run real good, solid, stable, happy relationships. He never been taught how to be a parent, a husband, a wife. He never been taught how really to bring bounty to this world. How really to do tshuva. Never, never. And now, in, in, in the powers that you've been left with, you, you're trying to make those baby steps and to start rebuilding your life, and you're praiseworthy, you, you deserve all the praises. You're amazing. And suddenly when you're doing tshuva, you don't see yourself guilty anymore. Why? Because Hashem gives the eyes of the righteous one to the his own eyes to the righteous ones. And suddenly when you're doing tshuva, so from that criminal, from that sinner that you were before, you become righteous. And now you're receiving the eyes of Hashem. And the eyes of Hashem are seeing only mercy. They see only good. They're judging favorably. And suddenly inside of yourself you're gonna have an inner peace, an inner quiet. You're gonna be Okay, that's me. That's what that I know. I don't know more than that. So how could I know more than what that I learned? I don't know. I'm trying. I'm happy. At least I'm trying. At least I'm being honest. I'm able to apologize. I can say I'm sorry. And by doing that, you will find Hashem. The real Hashem. The real Hashem. By being honest with yourself, finding the inner truth of yourself, you will find the real Hashem. Because today you can follow the creator of lies. You can follow the God of false. Because someone described some cruel leader, a punisher, and, 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 and vicious, and, and strong, and powerful leader that moves the nation, and revenge, and making order. <laughs> Please, <laughs> I don't need that. It's not, it's not a shame. It's not a shame. Maybe those are judgments. Maybe those are angers. Maybe those are results. Maybe those are things that are happening and taking place in the world. But that's not the complete picture. That's not the unity. That's not the wisdom that is above. That's not him. That's not the one that sent me here to this crazy world on a mission. That's not the one that I was speaking to him when I was just learning how to ride my bicycles when I was three or four years old. That's not him that I was begging to him that I'm going to score when I was running with my friends in school. That's not him. That's not that one that I was praying that my parents won't divorce. That's not him. 
That's not that one that I was begging to him to answer my prayers and that I'm going to succeed that exam, that test. That's not him. That one that I knew from my first steps in life, he was nice. He was kind. He was loving. He was the, the essence of hope and good and grace and kindness. I was begging to him, so I, I'm willing to serve him. You're going to find him when you're going to find yourself, your real self. Not that one that you're blaming. Not that one that someone told you bad things about him. That's why we're not allowed to talk or to hear Lashon Ara, bad words about someone. And especially not about ourselves. If someone is t telling you, that person is a thief, he's evil, he's wrong, he's a liar, he's so this and that. Okay, now when you will see him for the first time of your life, you have already a problem with him. It's a problem because you hurt. Now, when you're trying to find yourself and your mind is so fed up with foreign thoughts about yourself or you're lousy, you're so disgusting, you're worthless, you're ugly, you're stupid, look at yourself, you ruined, you did this, you did that. All of those bad words that you heard from foreign people about yourself and from your thoughts about yourself, your thoughts of your evil inclination, of your yetzerara about yourself, so you have a problem with your mirror. You have a problem with yourself. Oh, hey, wait, wait. No, no. Not so fast. I won't accept you. I won't love you. No, I still have problems with you. Why you were doing this? Why you were doing that? It's not the truth. It's a result of that Lashon Ara that's been said to us in all of our lives and in generations of Lashon Ara, destroying us. Comparing us to rats, to animals, to, to, to sickness, to diseases, to plagues, destroyed our self-esteem. You're a walking plague in, on earth. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Let's see. What can I do with that? Nothing. You need to drop that. It's a lie. You're not. You're innocent. You're a baby. You're beautiful. You're gorgeous. Look at you. How much you're trying, and you're willing, and you're hoping, and you're praying, and you're crying, and you're trying again, and you're falling, and you're not giving up, and you went to another person to ask him for an advice, and you went to another class, and you were Googling your questions, and you were looking for hope, and how many inspiring videos, and look at you! You're trying, you're swimming against the stream, and you, you're going out to the nature, and you're trying to talk, and it's so hard, and again you try, and again you go, and again, and you wash your hands, and then you realize, I don't know how to do that, and okay, I'll try again, and you ask, and you're embarrassed to ask, and you do it again, and you steal, and you apologize on that, that you don't know. You're sweet. You're amazing. That's you. Why can't you see it? Because you didn't come back completely to Hashem yet. How you come back completely to Hashem? You deal with your fears instead of running away from them. When you're running away from your fears, that's it, you're done. You're running do toward darkness. They are after you. They're on your tail, on your back. That's it. And you're out there. And they're surrounding you and barking and yelling and screaming and cursing. And you're done. Stop. Turn back. Breathe. Say, I don't know anything. I know I don't want to be scared anymore. Okay, I'm a liar. Okay, I want to deal with that. I'll say the truth. I'm a liar. Okay, now I feel better. I know I'm not lying anymore. And then what happened? One second ago, you were the worst liar. And now you became the most honest, truthful person in the world that is even able to admit that he lied for hundreds of years, all of his lifetimes, he was lying to his wife, he was cheating on her, he was doing this. And now, hey, I'm sorry, I lied. What happened? You became a Baal Tshuva. You found the answer to all your questions. You came back to Hashem from your complete darkness. Now you're standing in the light because you are truthful. A murderer, a person that killed someone else and now he's in prison for life. What do you want from him? You want him to come back. Even from the worst place of them all, there is a way back. What do you want from him? He killed him. He's dead. Now he's in prison and he realized he was wrong. Now what do you want from him? 
that he will understand how bad it was and how wrong it was and that he will go and gonna apologize and gonna try to fix and gonna talk to other people and convince them also to stop from violence and not to murder and not to kill and drop your weapon and undo this and the, that's what you're gonna expect what else can he do except of coming back to the truth I was wrong but now I want to do right is there something else I can do I'll do it the way to do it it's to stop lying to ourselves and to just be honest and truthful with ourselves and like we said, it's not to seek and to look for the divine truth, the one that is written in the Kabbalah, or of the Baal Shem Tov, or in the Baal Atanya, or Rabbi Nachman of Bre No, no, no. Be honest. That's the beginning. Be truthful. That's the beginning. And then when you will read Kabbalah, Zohar, Midrashim, Baal Shem Tov, Abdu'al Baal Atanya, Kola Baalim, you're going to read them, Kola Baal Batim, you're going to know what is right and what is wrong for you? You're going to find your path between the lines, between the words. You're going to sail in the sea. You can't see the path while you're sailing, but suddenly you have a feeling and you have an inner intuition and it leads you and it takes you and one month you learn that book and then you close that book and you move and you learn something else and suddenly you see that Hashem is building your life because you're flowing with Him you're aware you listen, you're tuned to the inner voice of your soul so you're flowing with your soul in a spiritual path not in a physical path of religion. Oh, no. You're just being truthful. You keep Shabbat and you eat kosher and you're being observant because you want to. Not because you're obligated. Not because you're afraid to be punished. Because you love Hashem and Hashem commanded. Hashem revealed His will, so I want. Because He chose to express His thoughts and to share his desire with me that I'm going to keep the seventh day and that I'm going to eat only kosher food and that I'm going to guard my thoughts and that I'm going to be positive and that first thing in the morning I'm going to wash my hands from all impurities of the night and I'm going to stand in prayer and I'm going to thank you. I want it in a positive way. Not because, oh, you didn't wash your hands. Oh, today I forgot to wash my hands. So go wash your hands. <laughs> wash your hands. What's the problem? What else can be done? Wash your hands. That's the only solution. Come back. To, okay, I forgot. There is a halakha, there is a rule for a person that woke up at 5 p.m. What to do with his tefillin, what to do with his shacharit. You have rules. And if you woke up at 5, okay, so you need to learn. What's the halakha? So how are you going to learn it? Google it. Hashem opened your opportunity. Okay, a person that woke up at 5 p.m., how should he pray shachri? You're going to find it. You're going to find it. Thousands of people ask that question before of you. It's going to be in the top of the search, of the Google search. It's the first one to... to <laughs> You don't need to search it. You can ask Siri. She can answer you. Oh, I also woke up at five, she's going to tell you. Amazing that you're asking, she's going to tell you. <laughs> Hashem provides the answers that we will just going to come back to Him and going to find the real Hashem. Because Hashem, He is in Hastara Shebetoch Hastara. Hashem is hidden. So when, even when you think, I know Hashem, Hashem, He is the God of Am Israel, of the Jewish nation, He gave us the Torah, you don't see nothing. I tell you, you can't see anything. Hashem, Elokei Israel, Hashem Melech, Hashem Allah, Hashem no. Nothing. You're blind in the darkness. You can't see anything. What those words mean for you? Nothing. I don't know. It's Hebrew. I don't get it. What does it mean? That's, that's your answer. You don't see anything. But to be kind, you know? Yeah, I know. And to love, you know? Yes, I loved one. Someone loved me. I remember. Those are things that you can relate to. So that's how you're going to expose Hashem. You're going to find Hashem. 
from between the cracks. You're going to find him. He will speak to you in your language, in the world of your concepts, using your vocabulary, the slang that you used to. People with your accent, from your culture, from your nation, will come to you and will deliver the news, the message of finding the real Hashem, the real Creator of the universe, that He is all kind, always happy, willing to help and to heal and to bring down wonders that never took place from days of creation, from ancient days of Kedem, of before creation. Those are the wonders of the redemption. There is so much more to wait for. Such a redemption, such salvation will take place in our life. That we're going to see wonders that the ones that went out of Egypt, they never saw. People will forget about the redemption of Egypt compared to the wonders that we're going to experience. For them, the Red Sea being open, Yamsuf, you're going to see the ocean, the Pacific Ocean open for you. You're going to see thousands and millions of dolphins, of whales, of, of stingrays jumping above the, 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 the view in some fantastic sunrise and sunsets that you cannot imagine. All the fish and all the water, all the creation will speak and sing the song of Hashem. All the trees will give new fruits. All the trees will give fruits that, you can, that will be edible. Rivers will start flowing in the streets, in the alleys, between the houses. Light will illuminate all kinds of darkness. You won't have no more separations. That is the light of redemption that is coming. We need to connect ourselves to the truth and then we're making the truth accessible. A va va value... What's the word? Available. Available. Thank you. By understanding, how are you going to know your wife? You're married. Now you want to know her. You want to understand who is she. If you never let her speak, you will never going to know who she is. You have a child. All the time you tell him, shut up, shut up. No, I don't know. Don't, later. Not now. Not now. You don't let him know himself and you will never going to know him. The same with the truth and with the power of Hashem. Before you let the truth in, into your life by being truthful, by being honest, you cannot experience the greatness of the power of the Almighty, of the Creator, the wonders that He can make in His world. We don't know. We never saw them. Why? Because we haven't made all the way back toward the truth to experience it. Thank you very much. Hazaku Baruch Hashem will bless you all. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.